All right, tonight I'm in here with Nate. Nate is a player who's played on some professional tours and has been a member here at Alta View Golf Club. Nate has a phenomenally good driver swing. I've been really impressed watching it. 125 miles an hour is a pretty stock speed for him. So we wanted to spend a little time here talking about the things that he does in his swing to enable such a fast uh, driver club head speed. So let's start off with your setup. Right, so tell me a little, walk me through some of the things you do in your setup that helps you swing so fast. All right, so I would say, me personally, um, in the setup, it's good to have a consistent setup. So after you've kind of got your line where you want the ball to be started, you're gonna obviously set up to that said line. And then I kind of use the shaft as my, my guide point for the inside of my heel making sure, okay, both feet are together, I'm on my line, and then I know that that ball is just in the inside of my left heel. Pretty typical standard place to put the ball. And then... So that's giving you, so we see on track man, when you get upward angle of attack on driver, it goes farther. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, uh, that's the idea of putting it that far forward, Yeah, is that upward angle of attack. And we'll see that as we look at the swing numbers. Mm -hmm. right? And then second will be creating your base, nice stable base. You wanna not have it too narrow. Some people might get up there and kind of swing like they're swinging a wedge, or you tell them, you know, have a wide stance and then they're just gonna be spread apart and then they're gonna lose a lot of uh, key elements in the backswing and, and through the ball. So I so like it's, to- It's like mama bear, papa bear, baby bear, right? So too yeah. narrow, too wide. Yeah. yeah, happy medium, about shoulder, shoulder width apart or just past shoulder width apart for the best stabilization in the swing. We need to be stable because we're swinging, you know, 80 to 130 miles an hour plus, some guys. And uh, if you don't have a good stabilized base, it's not going to get you anywhere. Right. So, foot, so we're putting the ball forward to get the upward angle attack. Mm -hmm. and then I notice you tend to turn your feet out a little bit. So, yep. I mean, a lot of instructors would say you got to have your feet, you know, square and everything. Uh, what's your, you know, why do you turn your, your, both of your feet out? So I, I like to have both my feet out. It just feels like I'm in an athletic position. My body is just more free. My joints aren't going to get kind of locked up if I have my feet too narrow or too wide, just slightly open with both feet. You can go a little more open with the front as you're gonna be rotating a little bit more on the follow through to help you balance. Uh, but yeah, I just like to have them just barely open. So even at your age, I mean, you're a lot more flexible than me, right? We're <laughs> a lot older than, uh, than a lot of you younger uh, players. I'm, I'm not swinging 125 myself, right? But to get at, at anybody's age, so if I turn this foot out, that's going to make it easier to get turned left as I'm coming through, you're saying? Yeah. So if I'm focused like this, kind of blocks faster. Yeah. And you feel, you feel that just facilitates getting around left more. Yes. Okay. So there's nothing magic about having to have your foot perpendicular to the target line. You open it up a bit. Cool. Yeah. If you're younger, you might be able to get away with having your feet straight and you'll still rotate okay and your balance might be there, but yeah, don't be, you can open that front foot quite a bit and it's not, a, it's not going to hurt you. Even if it's open at a 45 degree angle, that's fine. All right. So we've gone through some setup keys for you. Let's talk about how you actually move the club and get load and unload with the, with the swing. So takeaway, right? We see lots of people that come in here and see lots of slow motion videos where it's all over the place. What are your keys for success on the takeaway? So after you've got your setup position, nice stable base on the takeaway, I like to feel very, very connected. So the top of my body and my arms feel very, very still, very relaxed. And I start my rotation with my, my hips and shoulders and the club just kind of follows. I'm not going to be manipulating with my arms too soon. I'm just going to allow the club to follow my body as it rotates. So a lot of people kind of talk about the club head, kind of seeing the ball, the face of the club still kind of point towards the ball. So what I see when you do that, your arms 
there's there's not this rotation to the right with your arms. Yeah. Yeah. So that, uh, leave, that leaves your hands. I mean, when I stand over here, I mean, your hands are pointed here and the club head's here. So on the down the line video, you're going to be, I guess, above the swing plane with that club, right? The hands are in front of the club. Yes. Yep. And then also, if you're too much with your arms on the takeaway, people will start to kind of open up the face and manipulate it. Yep. Either too closed or too open. So you just maintain the square club face as long as possible to about this position where naturally your hinge is gonna start occurring. And then once you've got your hinge to about an L, a 90 degree angle there, that's about all you need as far as the hinge and lag goes. And then you're going to maximize rotation from this point. Okay, by... so there, there's, when, when you say you maximize that, I think there's something we need to kind of we can show to the camera a little better. So maybe we can turn around here. So it, as you get as you hinge that club and bring it up to the top, let's let's show that with a better angle here. Mm -hmm. What I see is your right side. It's not your arms that move that club back. Like your your shoulder is is actually getting farther away from your knee. Yep, I feel like my shoulder's getting high. I feel like I'm standing tall, and it's not it's not my arms. I'm not kind of faking extension, getting that club back, bending my left elbow. I'm maintaining this structured position on swing plane, keeping the face looking at the ball, and then just extending with my shoulders. So faking extension. So, so I can make it look like the club's really moved, but I do it like with this arm motion. You're saying, I can see there's a lot of stretch there on your right side. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay, so your right shoulder is really getting when you say extension, I mean, literally, it's, it's that. Yep. You're, you're extending away from your hip. Yep. Okay. All right. So, and then you immediately fire left. No. No. <laughs> okay. Not immediately. But that's, that's what we see all the time, <laughs> yeah. right, is, is you're here and you immediately fire. So what do you do? What do you do before you're firing left? And when do you fire left? Okay. There's a couple things I do before I fire left and attack the ball and I get up to the top position here. The first thing is I want to generate all this power I've been able to generate in the backswing. I've loaded up. I'm ready to release like the slingshot. I'm going to start my rotation and allow my, my knees to relax and my weight to slowly transfer to more of a neutral position. So that's the first, the first thing I feel is my hips I'm kind of sitting back on my right butt cheek and getting my legs, my knees to about parallel. So the club, like what direction, so the club is not, as, as, we, as I look at that, your club is not moving towards the ball at that point. No, just feels like it's, it's all initiated in the downswing with the lower body. And you try to keep everything up here as relaxed and still as possible at the beginning as you start to rotate your lower body. And then instead of firing immediately left, holding this position as long as possible with allowing the relaxed feel of the, of the grip here, you're gonna start to feel this shallow, having the club feel like it's staying behind and getting lower. Lower to the ground is the feel on the, on the downswing there with the arms. That's the first thing I do with my upper body and okay. arms. Okay, so if, if we look at it again back on, on this direction, we're, uh, we're face on. You're, you're not taking your arms. I mean, what's really easy, I think, for most golfers to do is you take your arms, you see the ball, your hands are kind of up high, and you throw your hands at the ball. And you are explicitly, you, you're not doing anything close to that. So what I'm seeing, you're saying soft hands and that, that shaft it's clearly shallowing. Yeah. So for you to generate, I mean, 125 plus speed, you're not saying throw the hands at the ball as hard as I can. You're saying it's soft. Yeah. It feels, okay. it feels like a, a whip as opposed to just giving it everything you've got. And that's what's going to force you to come over the top. Just firing things too soon is you're, you're maintaining a quiet club face, quiet upper body getting the big muscles moving, and then allowing the club to feel very relaxed and shallowing down, dropping down. 
getting on the swing plane instead of coming over the top and firing in a shallow, get it on the swing plane. And then with the right rotation, I'm going to be able to deliver the ball, deliver the club through up and through the ball as I exit left. Okay. So, so your speed isn't how hard you can pull it here. You're, you're saying you've got a, you've got a big angle on your, so as we look at your, if I look at your right wrist here, when you, let me if you turn back a little more towards the camera. When I look at the right wrist, when you say it's soft and it's come down, it's very extended. Yeah. Very. And, and, and that's not with tension. No. You know, it's, it's very light. So super, the club feels light in your hands. Yep. Super relaxed. Yep. And so you're really feeling then it's the snap through by going left. All right. So your knees, um, that motion, what are your, what are your knees? Uh, it kind of looks like your knees are pretty parallel to the target when you really start snapping that club left then. Yeah. When I feel like I've kind of got, I'm opening up, but at right. the point where my knees are about parallel back to parallel, that's when I feel like, okay, I'm going to be swinging hard. Got, got my lower body moving, activating everything and allowing room for me to properly come through on the club path. About, yeah, knees parallel. I'm gonna feel from this point, it's one motion up and through. I've got the club dropping onto the swing plane and then I'm gonna just continue rotating. My upper body now just follows, follows the lower body and allows me to come through on the swing plane. All right, so I'll get out of the way here. Let's, uh, let's have you hit. Hit one, feel that uh, with, with that motion. All right. All right, so we'll go through a couple of these in slow motion. That was only a 364 total, you know, and you're slowing down. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some 126, that was only 124. So <laughs> maybe you could uh, put, a, put a little more um, effort into it. But what we can see is, is we're gonna look at that in, on the, later in the slow motion video. You don't look like you're grunting at the top. Yeah. And I think that's a, maybe, a lesson for a lot of us, you know, mid handicappers is, is it's not how hard I'm pulling right there. That, that kind of, I guess, kills the wrist angles that you can really release then through the ball. Yeah. So releasing, what, what does that term mean to you? When it's like releasing the club, you go level, like, what does that mean to you? How, what do you feel in terms of your forearms, your hands, your wrists? Kind of what what's happening from we got your knees here now what do you, what do you feel here uh, th it's actually through the impact okay what i what i personally feel through impact um in a drill that i've worked a lot on is is ma making sure i maintain just a proper flow of my upper body i've got the lower body moving out of the way as i'm shifting but then the upper body that's controlling my arms, controlling the club and the club face, making sure that stays square on that swing plane is I make sure it's maintaining its position through. And then the speed of which I'm swinging, I'm going to be naturally extending as much as I can. I'm not going to be able to do anything to stop it. It's just a natural release. I just really work on keeping the club face square to the target as I'm moving my shoulders quick left got the hips firing, shoulders quick left, maintaining the swing plane with the square face. So you're feeling those shoulders quick left about, I get from here, mm -hmm. right? From when you get the point of your knees are more or less parallel to our target line. Yeah. You're saying now, now you let your shoulders go left. Yeah. It okay. just feels, I've got the relaxed club. It feels like really low coming down and then one motion through keeping 
that face square, just moving my shoulders as fast as I can and letting the club, it's going to feel like a whip and it's just following and it's just going to, the ball's just going to get in the way. I'm not trying to attack the ball. I'm just allowing the, the paths and the motion I've created that's going to generate and allow me to swing as fast as I possibly can without hurting myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I notice you're, you're doing a drill here with this left hand, like taking your right arm like that. What, what feeling is that ingraining in you? So this just makes, it makes it feel just super connected. I do it on the entire, the entire swing and I do a lot of one handed shots, mostly with like my wedges, okay. but it just creates the sense of connection all the way through. We have the lower body initiating everything, the motion, the turn, the power, and then the, the speed and the swing, it all feels very connected together and it's just a cleaner, more repeatable uh, feel. So, so you're not trying to race your arms across your chest then? No. I mean, no. it happens, Yep. but it's, it's an, you're feeling, and I notice, so you're, the impact feeling you're trying to ingrain with that, you've got extension here and you've got a bent right elbow. You're not, you're not trying to be a straight right arm yeah. as quick as you can. Yeah, I'm not trying to like snap at the ball. I'm trying to drive up and through while maintaining this position. And at the speed that you do it, you're naturally going to be releasing the club but definitely it feels as though I maintain this position about nine, you know, nine to three, just about, yeah. Okay, so your right arm coming through here as opposed to, and, and certainly what you're not doing, when I'm not, like you, we, we see so many people that the right wrist flexes, right? You are, exp, you are explicitly doing the exact opposite of flexing that, flexing that uh, right wrist. Yeah, I, I just, Keeping that face as quiet as possible, I just find this is the best way for me and how it feels and keeping the, the face square to the target line is that feeling through the ball and I'm not flipping, I'm not going to create any sort of flip as I rotate through and then you'll start in the full swing if you're, if you don't have the square club face, it's, you're going to lose a lot of confidence and not really trust where the ball is going to be going. Mm -hmm.